Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode, where I'll be interviewing Dr. Nikita Grigoryev, who's a PhD in biomedical engineering and an assistant industry professor of chemical and biomolecular engineering at NYU Tandon, as well as being a student advisor. So I'm really excited to host this conversation today because Nikita is someone I've known for over a decade. He's a very close friend of mine, and he's always had this commitment to understanding the mind and studying the human condition that's always inspired me. He's been a professor now at NYU for many years, and today's episode will be focusing on mental health for biomedical students, specifically in research and life sciences. So Nikita, it's wonderful to have you here. Welcome. Hi, Christina. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure and honor. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So to begin this interview, I'd love to kind of go more into your background as a professor and also researcher. And I'd love to know more about how you got into becoming a professor and researcher at the beginning and what led you down this path for your career. Sure. Um, so you pretty much remember me <laughs> in my beginning early stages of uh, turning into the biology nerd I am today. And uh, it's honestly started pretty early, I would say from middle school to high school, I was always interested in understanding natural phenomenon, um, be that in, uh, you know, molecular level, macro level, human behavior, I don't know, plants, <laughs> as you can see behind me. Um, and that always led me to um, idea that I'm going to be studying something and doing something that involves biology in some way. And um, when I started um, my education here at the same university I'm teaching right now at NYU Tandon, I joined by molecular science program, the same program and I'm now <laughs> advising for. And um, my career path from there could take either into medical career or into research career, but I was more interested in doing actual research and engineering. So I continued and um, stayed with NYU to learn biomedical engineering and stayed in the industry uh, in academia. So now I'm this kind of hybrid between um, a research professor and a biomedical engineer. So yeah. And do you feel like it was always like your road into academia, because I always find it very interesting when, you know, people choose this path, what makes them stay in the academic field? What, what, did you have like a specific calling that like led you into becoming a professor? Or was it kind of something that kind of caught you off guard? Or were you always striving to work in academia? So I always knew that I'm going to be doing research research just because I cannot stay away from lab. For me, it's I wake up excited to do experiments. I really love hands-on application, designing mm -hmm. something or learning something, investigating something. So if you want to do that, there are not that many choices that you have in the first place. So you have to either stay in academia or pursue industry. Mm -hmm. But on a level of a student, you usually stay where you are, which is in academia. Um, it's usually people divert later into industry. And the professorship is just something that you do. So when, if you understand a phenomenon well, you should also be able to explain it really well and teaching and um, making someone else just as excited about science as me um, it has always also been a passion of mine. So I realized that if I can truly explain something, it means that I really understand something. If I cannot explain something, then I need to work more on my understanding of this. So, you know, teaching, advising, research, they're all came in together. So I discovered myself in this position, but at no point um, would I say that it wasn't, that it wasn't totally unexpected. You know, I was um, somewhat feeling that I'm going to be a researcher one way or another. Beautiful. And what main challenges have you faced like so far in this path of research? It's a long path. It's uh, um, difficult to find reward in everyday activities unless you are literally the biggest nerd like I am for me just being in lab and you know just being able to you know pre-measure simple volumes is already making me excited but for people who stay in academia stay in medical field for a long time sometimes you don't see your goals until the very end of the path like let's say people who are um, in a medical school they have such a long um, education to obtain and they can only really work with patients um, pretty late in their education in um, 
academia, it's basically working for a very long time and sometimes not getting results that you were hoping for. Because mm -hmm. again, our job is investigating something in nature. No one promises you anything. No one says that you are the mind that will find out something. So it's just lack of um, certainty in um, future that might make people anxious. But I always say, well, that's also the exciting part, right? You never know what if you stumble upon a gold mine that has been in front of all of us and only you can see that. So that same uncertainty that makes people anxious, um, I try to turn into excitement. And what would you say have been, have you dealt with any big breakthroughs so far in your research career? Well, um, what, mean, what, have, what would you say represents these gold mines or is it more like incremental, I guess, breakthroughs that come with like what you're dedicating your research to? It is exactly that. So usually it's very rare that you completely start research from nothing, right? We are already mm -hmm. are on shoulders of giants, of giants who established academia science the way that we know it nowadays. So usually you join kind of ongoing research or you, you spend years and years doing quote unquote library research where you just learn what's happening and try to brainstorm ideas, but based on something that's established. Because another problem is if you think that you are coming up with some ingenious idea, humans come up with the same things in lots of cases. So chances are someone else already thought of that. So it's very important to educate yourself. Again, go and study, you know, sit in the library, sit on the internet, learn things that are already being discovered. So you can get not only inspired, but also understand what's valid, what's applicable, what's needed. Um, so yeah, my breakthroughs mainly have been um, just, you know, working with students, getting my research team together, um, getting my first uh, papers out. Um, just again, for me, breakthrough, breakthrough is being in an industry lab and being able to just do research. For me, that's already a breakthrough. Doing what you love. The, the, and, the just, and being able to just contribute to the science field, which is beautiful and very essential in today's world. Like the more Absolutely. we can understand about nature, I think the more power we have in understanding ourselves, so interconnected. Yep. And it's so, those tiny increments of ongoing science. And unfortunately, sometimes the um, value of scientific research doesn't even become apparent until years after it's been published or unfortunately until years after the, the scientist who discovered it is you know, maybe no longer here. So mm -hmm. it's this dedication to, to contributing to this ongoing structure that will surpass you, will surpass all of us because it's, it's, it's knowledge. It doesn't have time boundaries. And um, again, just not expecting every day that you will be getting you know, a cookie for it. The cookie is yeah. your control. And the cookie is the fact that you're allowed to contribute to that. Beautiful. And what would you say, like, from a mental health perspective, considering that you work with a lot of students who are dedicated to this field and, you know, wanting to contribute as well from this perspective, what do they struggle with the most from your perspective? I would say burnout, just because of people who come into the field um, are sometimes extremely motivated because they envision <clears throat> science or medical field to be a certain way and um, they work very hard or they believe that they work hard on something and unfortunately when people don't see results right away or they don't succeed um, one time multiple times people burn out and then they just um, think that this is not the path for them anymore they lose enthusiasm and what hurts me the most is when they also lose enthusiasm in science as you know a pursuit of knowledge because i'm mm -hmm. like well you know like because you you know failed in your math exam doesn't mean that you shouldn't be interested in how i don't know like human brain works you know it's but unfortunately that's how um students are and that's how I was myself you know a failure can easily divert you from something that you love so yeah burnout and um minute failures truly um impacting students and do you ever experience a burnout in your career like would you say it's something that you also went through yeah I mean it's um I feel like it's constantly um <clears throat> balancing between you know, enthusiasm and also still trying to understand like how relevant is the research, how relevant is what I'm doing right now. 
mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. while also respecting while also respecting the fact that sometimes brain get gets tired it's an organ and you cannot always you know just like you cannot go and run a marathon every day even if you're an athlete you cannot expect your brain to be performing at 100 percent every day if you're a scientist no matter who you are so um not internalizing um burnouts um and just appreciating that sometimes it's okay to take time off and to do stuff that you like that has nothing to do with science that has nothing to do with your medical with your specific career rewarding your brain with doing something completely disconnected goes a long way really really yeah. makes it such a big difference so for me yeah i have i, I experience burnouts quite frequently it happens it's just um being able to recognize them being honest with them and not let them necessarily represent like a burnout in your life you know 100 percent. i think there's also like so many ways you can define burnout in different like in all industries and i feel like i've definitely experienced it too and for me it's more of like an energetic like association where i where i tune in where i feel like i'm just connected to what i'm doing suddenly it's like there's like you lose sense of the joy, you lose sense of the purpose, you lose sense of the meaning. And I think that's something that is so human and should almost like be normalized because I feel like burnout gets to the point that you're just physically, emotionally, spiritually, completely exhausted. And that you and you can't function. It's like you've gone to that point where you've prolonged this way of being around what you're doing, that suddenly you lose all sense of of meaning. And I think that's something we can avoid probably early on if you're aware of that the cues that you're not fully connected in in the moment with what you're here to do absolutely and you're 100 percent right because once you lose that enthusiasm um what you're doing no matter how fun it is becomes a chore it's like yeah. a sort of, and and uh, um it's like i say imagine housework if you make it a ritual if you know have a whatever you want a glass of wine glass of, um, cup of tea um put music it could be a pleasant relaxing experience versus if you um you know build up this hatred towards oh you know, oh, how to do those chores then you you know put it in your head is that a chore um unfortunately same thing can happen too if you're learning some new material or if you are doing research you know it's interesting yeah. because invested into it because you relate to it because you are again tuned in as you say but once you tune out you're suddenly like wait i'm just sitting here doing a bunch of math problems like a high school student you know like what am i doing here what, what, what's happening it becomes a chore and unfortunately for the brain it's so difficult to um teach someone basically what i say is learning stops once enthusiasm stops if you are not mm -hmm. interested in the subject, it's very difficult to make your brain flag it as necessary information. And the opposite, if you're learning something and you're interested in it, you don't have to memorize anything. You go to sleep next day, you wake up, you already know everything. So it's this balance and again, appreciation. Okay, I have a burnout right now. Let's take a break. I'm not going to achieve much. I'm not going to learn much. I don't think anything productive. So again, not trying to prevent calling it a chore forcing your brain to something because your brain if you force it your brain will take it as a chore and the response to that is just not the same in terms of productivity learning um you name it yeah and i, I also think like we don't recognize like how often it's also about us giving the mind the right job to do you know when it comes to how we're focusing our attention but also how we're focusing the association of meaning to what we're doing and I think all of these things are about like being intentional with like, this is important. Like the intention of me doing these things is important for this reason. So your mind can kind of find a new way of having peace around certain decisions that we're making as we're pursuing our careers in sciences, in the medical world, in psychology, in psychiatry, whatever it is. And I feel like we just said is like really important to like recognize as you're a student of life essentially you know giving the mind the right focus point absolutely yep yep exactly it goes for everything it's not just in specific like um in in the um industry of of biology of life scientists uh, or, or medicine it's just that it's so profound and it translates so quickly because science is so interesting so when i see students enthusiastic when i see people working on something that they love 
it's so easy and it's so apparent because of the way that they speak, because of the way that the results that they produce. And the opposite, when people come in and they do not want to do this and they do not feel connected and there's nothing wrong with it. You do not, not everyone has to be connected to, you know, biology or medicine and God, I respect it. I think it's important to love what you do and it's important yeah. to find what you love. Uh, so it, the opposite is true. Whenever I see people forcing themselves and really pushing through, uh, the advice to me is just, don't do that <laughs> stop either try to find something else to do at this moment or maybe completely redivert your field you've tried yourself in this it's not you know clearly it's not interesting for your brain respect it don't force it mm. yeah i think we also have to like trust when like our in that intuition that comes with our mind not working with us because like, there's so many layers to it as well so when we're being redirected and we're losing that enthusiasm you have to focus, you have to allow yourself to move forward in a different way and be guided, I think, from those impulses that I think we all have to live through multiple times as we're, as we're being kind of pushed to evolve and transform in our careers. All have the you, time. Yeah. Have you ever, I guess, maybe this is more, because like it seems like you've always had that clarity around how you want to contribute to the academic world, but does do you experience that through how you change your research focus? Or how, how have you experienced that when it comes to, you know, letting yourself pivot as a professor? Um, sorry, could you just reiterate the question? Do you mean um, how, the, how does my, yeah, could you just paraphrase it a little bit? When you pivot your focus, because, you know, we were just talking about this, like the way sometimes the mind is, is guiding you to like make new decisions and relate. Yeah your work in a different way how how have you experienced as a professor has it been more like focused on how you change your m mentality around your research or have you ever gone through like a very big transition that mm -hmm. that has kind of been almost almost feeling like a 180 i see i see yeah well so absolutely again when uh, especially when you're dealing with research and uh, when being a professor in lots of cases we have to do not only what we like which of course you know your research is around the area of interest of yours but in academia just like anywhere else you're told what to do or you hear what's needed a lot right so you cannot just sit and start any kind of research usually it adheres to either you know the university goal or to general direction for example i was doing certain research let's say that was more to do with cancer and then when pandemic started um i was kind of forced to redirect my research and focus more on educational development just because suddenly students were not allowed to be in the university as much they couldn't go to labs as much and um, i was thinking well how how do i still make it interesting for me and how do i still remind my brain that no no we're still doing science just because someone took away the topic of your interest doesn't mean that it's wrong or that you cannot have just as much love towards new topics so i tried to, so i started to research more on how i could connect the already established research that i have to you know new developments in our labs and basically found those same things uh, that would make me so interested in my previous research in this new uh, field so again learning about how to for example learning about how to use new devices you're learning how to use a, a sequencer a qpcr machine all of those things i remembered what was so interesting for me learning back then well it's again discovery of all of those new concepts this time it was discovery mm -hmm. of how to use all of those new machines and apparatuses around lab so i found that same joy that we have you know when we're learning something new and it basically reignited it within myself and that's what i tell to students when it's a subject that is tough or is slightly different than what what, what your usual area of interest is try to find the same cues that you found in the subjects that you love so much that ignited your brain that made you say hmm you know what this is actually interesting because i always say no one with an a in math hates math <laughs> once you get rewarded once you are yeah. suddenly realizing how cool those things are there is your brain starts to like those things i don't know if it's biology that found me or i was just always poking around learning about biology and, uh, and that uh, and because of that uh, i found it you know i'm saying people do study do work hard do not be afraid to 
um, again, try to ignite this interest in different areas because you might find exactly that passion within something new, within something that you um, might have been afraid to um, tackle earlier just because you thought it would be too difficult. But all of those interesting things, they lie there, they are there, they are embedded in this world that we're still discovering. Yeah. And I guess it's like, it's interesting when you get those reaffirmations too, ever like what your unique genius is as individuals. Yeah. And um, yeah, beautiful. it's a beautiful perspective too. And like how you identify with what brings you that, that spark to pursue. And I guess like going back to the burnout piece, when you were talking about like what you observe the most in your students when they're pursuing this path, have you identified any other patterns as well in like what what you feel is affecting the mental health in academia the most right now over the years? Yeah, so, well, burnout is one of the most profound ones, but also the fact that um, unfortunately mental health awareness um, in academia was not as um, prevalent or it wasn't addressed as much right now. And I would say, unfortunately, thanks to pandemic, and probably that's one of the few good things that came out of pandemic, is people mm. became less afraid to address, you know what, I have anxiety, you know what, I'm, I'm afraid, you know what, um, I'm dealing with a lot right now, I'm, I'm dealing with a burnout. So even those terms, all of those things, like for example, the term gaslighting, you know, it, people were doing gaslighting, people were doing self gaslighting a long time before, but pandemic kind of suddenly educated people in ways, in ways of mm, hurting each other mentally, hurting yourself mentally. So I'm glad that those things were uh, brought out and, uh, during pandemic. So yeah, it's, it's that. And when you say like it was brought out in the pandemic, like how so it's more like the awareness of how people were dealing with these issues when they had to slow down? Or would you say like academia needed to really focus on giving more support? Uh, it's, 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 it's both. So, so academia uh, realized that it needs more support and asking students, you know, how are you doing? How is everything? Mm -hmm. How is like because it was always like oh you know what it's so tough it, students come here to learn about science it's difficult so of course you're going to be naturally stressed and anxious it's no wonder students are crying you know in the library because the subject is so tough and I say no that's not right it's it's it, that's what creates the stigma against uh you know approaching science always oh, going to be so hard or it's going to be nights of 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 hard work um it should be brought more like yeah it is you know, a tough subject, but it's so interesting and it's so rewarding. And if you do feel stressed out, if you do feel burnt out, if you do have anxiety, there are resources that will help you tackle it versus us saying, oh, no, no, you know what, that's just normal. Like that's again, for example, that's gaslighting. And what I'm saying, uh, why pandemic brought it out, it just, I feel like people were focused. Uh, well, first of all, there was lots of flare out of mental health issues during pandemic because people were spending so much more time with themselves, by themselves. Um, so lots of internal issues were brought out. But that mm -hmm. helped people also identify those things, you know, call it by its rightful name. And now it's like exercising a demon. You have to name it by the name, same thing. So people love, okay, this is my mental issue. This is yeah. at least, or, or not even naming it specifically, but just saying, I do acknowledging, I have anxiety. Something is not right. The brain is an organ, it can also be, uh, faulty. It can also experience stress. It can also experience, you know, wear like any other organ. So this is what I'm saying that the pandemic brought it out and students, I feel like became more aware of themselves and us as educators, we became more aware of our own ability to burn out and ability uh, and, and um, the fact that students burn out or quickly that they experience again, like mental health issues. And um, yeah, um, I'm experiencing definitely a more of a rise in mental health awareness right now in academia. That's good. And you, would you say like now you feel like there's definitely more resources there in comparison to when you started in the field as an definitely. undergrad? 100%, at least, I mean, I'm working within a, a specific university like NYU has been um, very um, efficient at, at, at uh, targeting that NYU has always been on the student's side 
but mm -hmm. even if you made such an increase i cannot talk about uh, all universities but at least i'm seeing lots of scientific um, publications and periodicals are now publishing articles that have to do nothing with research but just focusing on people in academia as um, you know, a group of people that can experience unique mental health disorders, unique struggles. So I'm, I'm loving it. I'm saying, yes, definitely remind people that it is tough. It's like people who, I don't know, let's say go to pursue, I don't know, education, people who go to pursue uh, military, people who go to pursue sports, they each need unique kind of mental health awareness. You know, mm -hmm. like if you're dealing with guns, if you're dealing with uh, surgery, if you're dealing with, I don't know, death, you have to be prepared. If you're dealing with science, you also have to be prepared. So um, I'm, I'm glad that it's being brought up and it's being, the more resources are became, becoming more available, at least within where I see it. Beautiful. And I guess from a professor perspective now that you kind of lived the student journey as well, what would you say, what advice would you want to give to researchers and professors in your field to like help support the mental health movement even further? Um, be aware and remind yourself every day that you are just as much of a student as the students who are actual students who are facing you. Mm -hmm. Because um, uh, that disconnect between academia and students, between professorship and students, that um, exists is only because of um, professors, you know, sometimes thinking of themselves as something that is, you know, completely separated from students. And it's sad because let's say when you go to school, you have teachers who are specifically pursued education in education. So they know how to be teachers, they're just teachers. In a university, we uh, sometimes they're amazing professors who are scientists, who are, you know, have thousands of publications, who are acknowledged in the world that made a huge difference, but they may not necessarily be amazing educators, teachers. Mm -hmm. And when a student comes to such a, a professor, they feel this disconnect and it suddenly puts them or oh, this newbie who is just wants to know about science versus this amazing figure. I say, break this disconnect, immediately join them and say, oh, how about you look at my project? What, what can you tell me? What do you think I should do? Ask people who you don't even think are you know, knowledgeable in your field for advice and respect that when a person comes to you and they want your advice, um, just be humbled by it and do not try to put a front to it. Do not try to make a separation between, oh, this is a scientist versus this is a student. We're all scientists. We're all students of life. So just um, yeah, meet people halfway, um, be respectful to pursuit of knowledge, to desire to be a student and remind yourself that at no point you are, let's say you achieved your final goal and now you're knowledgeable. Now you know things. You are just, I'm a student. I know nothing. The more you find out, the more you find out how far you are from actual understanding. So yeah, just remind yourself every day, stay humble. Beautiful, power of the beginner's mind and 100%, I think that's, that's just good wisdom to live Absolutely. by. To believe that Absolutely. we know nothing, know that we can be curious as we evolve and that we're here to, to constantly learn and change and are for our beliefs to be challenged and for us to understand that, you know, we, we are basically all in this together. So I think, thank you so much for sharing that whole perspective on like unity around the field of science and, and consciousness. Cause I think essentially it's something that we all need to remind ourselves of this every single day, that there's no separation between our status, our roles in society and our roles in academia. And this actually education is what lays the foundation to who we become. Absolutely. And you, you see translating on a much larger scale when you see people of any background you know, succumbing to the most unfortunate diseases. It doesn't matter, you can be a millionaire, a billionaire, uh, Steve Jobs will still unfortunately be dying from cancer. And uh, it reminds us that we are all in the same struggle. And that's the beauty of science is that it can unite people from any language, any background, any belief. Um, you know, when I'm sitting, like a, a nice thing about teaching at NYU, when I look at my class, I see people of every single uh, ethnicity, of different skin colors, of different religions, and it's just, a reminder that this is how science should be that we all the all of the answers that lie they all lie within our diversity with how diverse the brain is with how many representations of humankind we have in our groups mm -hmm. again just a reminder to also to stay diverse to stay humble to stay open 
Uh, but yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Nikita, for sharing your insight and your journey with everything that you've lived in your career. It's all very inspiring. And I think it's it's very important to highlight these things within the academic world. And I'm sure it will resonate with a lot of people who are pursuing this path. And as a way of saying thank you from CognaFit as well, we'd like to invite you to do a cognitive assessment so we can assess your brain health just as a little gamification experience. Um, to give insight into your own cognitive abilities. And um, also because this is why we do what we do. We're here to give people, you know, that insight into the way the mind works, where the brain works together with neuroplasticity. So would you be willing to do a live session with me today? I would love to. Fantastic. Well, you do have, I think, I believe you already have the link. So all I'm going to ask you to do is just share the screen with me so I can evaluate your performance in real time. And we will play our task assessment together where you'll have to memorize the order of the glowing circles. Okay, yeah. Uh, can you see my screen now? I can see it perfectly. Perfect instruction. Yep. Here it is. Should I just start? Yeah, start. Go ahead. And let's see how well you can do in the next two minutes. Let's see. I am. Oh. Ooh, I tried to remember the research of the region. Oof. Are we testing your accuracy? Oh, so turn. Okay. Okay, I'm good. It looks like a gut. It looks like a um, digestive, not large intestine. Large so, intestine. Do you yeah, feel like, like the microbiome is active? Right. So far, 100% accuracy. Come on, Nikita. Killing it. Oh, okay. Neuroplasticity is on point. I should just, I should just record pathway. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Okay. No distractions. Or should I distract him on purpose? Absolutely. Oh, my God. Oh my God. What's the professor going to do? So far, I'll say you got 100%. Your brain health is on point, Professor. Look at you. <laughs> well, that's, that's not really a professor's <laughs> task. That's pretty. <laughs> All right, one, two, three. <laughs> living up, living up to the example. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. 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 I, that's giving me Knowing that he has a student that's going. <laughs> You can't do, I mean, 100% was always, always Nikita's game. Uh -huh. I, I remember in our own biology class. <laughs> oh my. Okay. Next well, it's okay. We don't need to, we can't, we, we can't continue actually continue with the next level. Let's see. Oh, oh yeah? Should I? Okay. Dun, dun, dun. It's getting harder. Break in between. For me to do. <laughs> oh, be nice. <laughs> Recovering. Girl. Well played. Get in there, honey. I feel like we're on Twitch right now. I know. <laughs> the life gamers on Twitch. <laughs> oh, getting longer. No. Bye. Uh, <laughs> you got this, bro. So what's my ability? Oh, that's it. So I will send you the report after this okay. conversation. But your brain. <laughs> Thank, you for not. Thank you for is... not publicly <laughs> saying it. <laughs> we will send you the 
results afterwards and okay. we'll let you know but it looks like overall your brain health is pretty in good health and you've got very good performance goals very fast reaction time too so well played professor <laughs> always yours sincerely yours thank you so much for everything thank you everyone for tuning in today and we look forward to hearing your questions in the comments if you have any thing that's inspired you specifically about this conversation let us know we'd love to hear from you and um, if you do ever want to contact Nikita Grigoriev around his research or around what he shared with us today feel free to also write us or send us a private message thank you very much everybody thank you everyone